Hi there, choosing to film in HLG instead of D-Log-M on your Osmo Pocket 3 gives you one big advantage when it comes to colour grading. This is still going to give you an advantage even if you're not planning on delivering in HDR, perhaps you might be delivering in Rec. 709 for upload to YouTube or social media, or perhaps you're doing a job and you're editing this footage for someone to use on a website. Filming in HLG still gives you these benefits when it comes to colour grading. Let me go and take you into Resolve and I'll show you what I mean. I've already got this project set up and I've got a couple of clips here. One of these is DLOGM and one of them is HLG. I'm just going to switch over to the list view to get access to some of the metadata. Because unlike DLOG M, HLG is an actual specification that DaVinci Resolve can understand and use when it comes to color grading. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm going to do is right click on one of these column headers and I'm going to go and enable this input color space checkbox. Just going to tick that and it's going to add it somewhere around here. And if you don't see it here, you might have to scroll to the end to find it. I'm just going to move it right over here so we can see what's going on. And straight away, you can notice that this first clip, this was shot in HLG on the Pocket 3. You can see that this is set as Rec 2100 HLG. That means this file is recorded using a much bigger color space than this second DLOG M clip, which has just been recognized as Rec 709. The thing to understand about DLOG M is it's not really well understood because as far as I know and as far as I've seen online, DJI have not actually published a white paper for the DLOG M specification. And that's one of the reasons why you won't find a built-in transform for it in DaVinci Resolve. However, DaVinci Resolve does know how to work with Rec 2100 footage. First thing I'm going to do is come up to the file menu here and I'm going to come down to project settings because I want to show you my color management settings here. I've got the color science set to DaVinci YRGB. You can use a color managed workflow but I'm going to show you the non-color managed workflow in this demo just to make it a bit clearer. The output color space is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So here we're going to do the final export and final deliverable of this edit in Rec 709. So we're not going to deliver it in any kind of HDR format. For the timeline color space here, no Notice I've set this to DaVinci WG Intermediate. The WG stands for Wide Gamut. And basically, this is a massive color space, much, much, much bigger than, say, something like Rec. 709. So when we're doing color grading and moving colors around, we're not going to be hitting up against the edge of the Rec. 709 color space and potentially causing a few problems. Even though we're still delivering in Rec. 709, when we're doing our color grade, we get to work in a much bigger space, which is more malleable and has a lot more data to work with. And then we can finally do the conversion back down to Rec. 709. If we converted to Rec. 709 right at the start, then we're going to be losing some of that data and then we're going to be color grading with less data to work with than if we're working with something like DaVinci Wide Gamut. So once you've set up your color management settings, you can go and create a timeline to edit. I'm just going to go and edit this actual intro that we just saw. I'm going to right click on this and create a new timeline and we'll go and open that up in the edit page. You can see at the minute this footage looks really washed out and that's because we haven't set up the correct conversions to be able to work with it and color grade it and also deliver in Rec. 709. I'm going to click the color button down here to head over to the color page and because we're not working in a color managed workflow we need to set up the conversions using the nodes here. The first thing I'm going to do is right click and give this node a label. This shorthand just means to DaVinci Wide Gamut. I'm going to come over to the effects here and turn them on and I'm going to come down here to this color space transformer effect and drag that onto this first node. So what we want to do in this first node is take all of that data from the HLG Pocket 3 file and transform it into the DaVinci Wide Gamut working space. In the input color space drop down here you want to scroll down and select Rec 2100 and for the input gamma scroll down again and select Rec 2100 HLG scene. So that's what the Pocket 3 file was recorded in. We now need to tell it what to output from this node. In this case, it's going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut. And for the output gamma, this is going to be DaVinci Intermediate. And just close the effects. So now we've converted all of that data from the HLG format recorded by the Pocket 3 into DaVinci Wide Gamut. We can now go and do the color grading, but we still need to convert back from DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec. 709. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt S to add a new node. And I'm going to put this all the way over here. I'm going to right click and give this a node label to Rec. 709. Once again, turn on the effects. I'm going to use the middle scroll button just to move around. Drag on a color space transform again to this new node. And this time, 
we need to convert from DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709. So for the input, we're going to select DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. And for the output color space, we're going to select Rec. 709. And for the output gamma, Gamma 2.4. So in this example, we're delivering for standard dynamic range Rec. 709. But if you were delivering for something like HDR, you could change these output settings to be whatever you need them to be. This is fine, however, for something like YouTube or social media. So now we've got these two technical conversions. In the middle here, that's where we can do the actual color grading. Just going to select this first node and hold down Alt S on the keyboard. And I'm going to do the same thing again and again. So the actual color grading work is going to happen in all of the nodes down here. We're not going to touch these two nodes again now. Exactly what color grading you're going to be doing is obviously going to depend on the footage that you're working with and the look or the feel that you want to get out the other end. Just going to set a frame here that I can work with. That's as good as any. And we're going to use this first node to modify the exposure, the second node to modify the contrast, and the third node to modify the color. If you want to, you can give these nodes labels, let's say exposure. You can have as many nodes as you want in this section to do any kind of color grading that you want to do. This is just a real basic starting point. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna turn on this qualifier. And if I hover over here, Notice that you can see this circle moving on the scopes. This is just giving me an indication of how bright this area under the eyedropper is. So at the minute that's way too bright. So we could use offset here to bring things down or any of these other color grading controls. In this case, I'm actually gonna use gain. I'm just gonna bring down that top end of highlights to something about the 70. And if we hover over here, we've kind of controlled that brightness a bit more. We can now go on to contrast and add some contrast. So I'm just going to use the primaries contrast control here. Just gradually increase that contrast till it's looking a bit more defined. Maybe something like that. And if you want to, you can obviously come back to the exposure here. Maybe drop that a little bit more. So now we've got exposure, contrast, we can move on to color. And for this image, I think I want to cool it off a bit. So I'm just going to drag this little dot in the middle of offset. It's going to drag it down and to the right a bit just to get the look I want. And you can use Control D on the keyboard to disable a node and re-enable it, just so you can get an easy before and after. And I'll just select all of these three nodes and hit Control D to disable them all. That was the before, and this is after color grading. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time color grading your actual footage than I'm doing here in this demo. Just wanted to show you the workflow. The main point to take away from this workflow is that because we've converted to DaVinci Wide Gamut here, all these three nodes in the middle here are being operated on in a very big color space, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then at the end of our color grading, we're converting to the target format.